Less than six weeks until the Iowa caucuses, four Republican hopefuls not named Trump try to set themselves apart from him and each other. Good evening from New York. And Anderson, hello from the spin room here on the campus of the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa, site of the fourth primary debate of the election season 2024. It is just wrapping up. Chris Christie, Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, and Vivek Ramaswamy, once again, the former president did not take part. Nikki Haley, who has, of course, been rising lately as a contender in some polls and in the eyes of some campaign watchers and certainly in the eyes of some big donors, she came in for, she had a lot of criticism heading towards her tonight from DeSantis and Ramaswamy. Yeah, no doubt about that. I know you're going to be speaking, Dana, with some of the debaters tonight. Looking forward to that. Seeing as Pamela Brown is checking the facts on what they said. Seeing as Gary Tuckman is back with his focus group of voters in Iowa who watched tonight. Also, our political panel here. But first, a moment from the debate stage. A clash between Chris Christie and Vivek Ramaswamy with Nikki Haley in the middle. You do guilty. this at every debate. I'll, I'll tell you exactly what no, no, Don't interrupt me. I didn't dealers. interrupt you. Okay, you Tell say this, you, you do this, at, you do this at every money. debate. You go out on the stump and you say something. All of us see it on video. We confront you on the debate stage. You say you didn't say it, and then you back away. And I want to say exactly what, no, what I said, Chris. I, I'm not I done yet. Well, this now is now look. This is not a spew. This is not a spew nonsense. This is the fourth debate. The fourth debate that you would be voted in the first 20 minutes as the most obnoxious blowhard in America. We're now 25 minutes into this debate. And he has insulted Nikki Haley's basic intelligence, not her positions, her basic intelligence. She doesn't know regions. She wouldn't be able to find something on a map that his three year old could find. Look, if you want to disagree on issues, that's fine. And Nikki and I disagree on some issues. But I'll tell you this. I've known her for 12 years, which is longer than he's even started to vote in a Republican primary. <laughs> and while we disagree about some issues and we disagree about who should be president of the United States, what we don't disagree on is this is a smart, accomplished woman and you should stop insulting so her. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to take several times over. Yeah. So first of all, I think we just learned something from Chris Kirsten. We learned on, three things. Go we ahead. learned three things right there. First of all, Chris Christie also doesn't know what provinces in eastern Ukraine he actually wants us to fight for. Chris, your version of foreign policy experience was closing a bridge from New Jersey to New York. Yeah. So do everybody a favor. Just walk yeah. yourself off that stage, enjoy a nice meal, yeah. and get the hell out of this yeah, race. One of several sharp clashes tonight here to talk about it. Seen in Newsnight anchor Abby Phillips, seen in political commentator Van Jones, anchor The Source, seen as Caitlin Collins, also seen in political commentators Alyssa Farrah Griffin, David Urban, and Scott Jennings. More people than were actually in the debate itself. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's more really people cool. have watched the debate. A lot, a lot of different perspectives. <laughs> for the panel. Thank yeah, you uh, what stood out to you? I mean, I think with Nikki Haley, we saw the, the perils of emerging successfully in the last several debates. Every single candidate on that stage within the first several minutes was going after for Nikki Haley pretty much the entire time. There were moments where she was a little bit removed from the conversation. I think Governor DeSantis actually had a stronger debate than what we've seen him do in several of the last debates. But, I mean, a lot of it was just arguing on stage between all of them and Vivek Ramaswamy yelling at points. And then I think the most notable point was Chris Christie at the end saying, picture election day and saying, Donald Trump will not be someone who's voting on that day because he's going to be a convicted felon. Mm. Mm. Ben? Uh, I, I thought it, it was like Wonder Woman fighting off like a whole mob of like supervillains. I mean, Nikki Haley had to defend herself every second of that uh, 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 de 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 uh, debate performance. And she did well. She actually held up well. She was actually able to pull it <laughs> off. Um, and even when uh, uh, Vivek was saying that she didn't know the provinces, she knew the provinces. I was like, so, you know, Nikki Haley did a great job. But I was very proud of Chris Christie. Chris Christie was, was an, a, 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 a scholar and a gentleman tonight. Abby? Yeah, I mean, I think Nikki Haley took a different strategy than we've seen from her. She actually kind of took a step back a little bit, which, which really underscored the fact that she's the front runner in the race right now. She had a lot coming at her. She didn't try to be in every moment. She had Chris Christie defending her. He probably did a better job defending her on the stage than doing anything necessarily for his own campaign. Uh, and in some ways, I see why they 
pursued that strategy this time around uh, because you don't need to respond to every single thing. Uh, and it just the, just the fact, the eagerness of the DeSantis and the Ramaswamis to attack her only proved to the voters and to the audience she is the one that they think that they have to beat. And that's, I think, the message that they were trying to send tonight. Well, and Nikki Haley proved once again that she is a political heavyweight. She's arguably won all of the debates or at least performed exceptionally well in them. But the moment that stood out to me, and I don't want to read the tea leaves too much here, when Chris Christie was a gentleman and jumped in to defend her. He made a point to say we disagree on some things, but that, to me, somebody who's run his sole campaign on stopping Donald Trump and has ha happened to lag in the polls, I could see a world in which he ends up endorsing a Nikki Haley. Mm -hmm. he, he did draw that contrast, but the way that he described her, the relationship, her credibility, spoke as somebody who could end up backing her in short time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, look, and, and Chris, Governor Christie was, I, I mean, he kept pointing out time and time again, I'm the only one up here that didn't put my hand up here that said I would support Donald Trump if he was the nominee. He kept drawing distinctions, making making the candidates answer questions better than the moderators did, right? He was he was really forcing the issue. I think he did a great job tonight. Uh, unfortunately, his numbers haven't moved since day one. Yeah. And, and, and when you sit back, Scott and I, we were talking about this earlier, we were watching the debate. Um, from the first debate performance uh, till today, the numbers really haven't moved. Trump has been in the high 50s, low 60s. Uh, DeSantis has been 13, 14. Um, Nikki Haley has kind of come up a bunch, and Vivek Ramaswamy has dropped, and, and, and Christie's kind of stayed the same. So, you know, it's reshuffling the deck chairs on the Titanic here a little bit on, on this side of the aisle, but, uh, you know, N Nikki Haley had a, a solid performance tonight, and, and Chris Christie, I think, did very, very well. For the sake of this commentary, we'll assume that any of these people have a chance to beat Donald Trump. <laughs> so I think what we saw tonight, I saw alliances forming tonight. Yeah. For the first time, we really saw alliances. The the, the pre-Trump GOP, Christie and Haley, versus the post-Trump GOP, DeSantis and Ramaswamy, who were teaming up to attack Haley. As you pointed out, Alyssa, Christie came to Haley's defense. That is one thing that stuck out to me. But as I was watching them, and I do agree that the, the narrative here is going to be that Haley was attacked, therefore that means she must have momentum. DeSantis churns out solid Republican conservative content on virtually every question. He he did not bobble a single question tonight. Ramaswamy once again hurt himself, just as he has in every single debate. But the one thing that, that really dawns on me is there's not room enough in Iowa for both Haley and DeSantis, mm -hmm. and there's not room enough in New Hampshire for both Haley and Christie if any of them hopes to get close to Donald Trump. Will this field ever consolidate? It doesn't feel like it's going to. And once again, Fragmentation is Donald Trump's friend, and as you pointed out, since we started on August 23rd, he went, he's gone from 55 to 61 in the national polling averages. Yeah. It's hard to argue that his but strategy of I, sitting this out has been anything but genius. I, I would agree that sitting it out was wise. I'm not sure I don't think the field consolidates. Listen, DeSantis isn't going anywhere, but it's very quickly becoming a race for number tw two between Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley. And there are a lot of important endorsements still sitting on the sidelines. Now, endorsements don't mean what they used to, but... I'm watching to see where Governor Sununu comes out in New Hampshire. He's consistently outperformed Donald Trump in his home state. If he backs Nikki Haley, that gives her momentum she needs. If she can rally more support within Iowa, that gives her momentum. She is head-to-head -head with Ron DeSantis. And Chris Christie, he does still pull about 5% in New Hampshire. That's a bit of support that she could pull off there. So I don't. I think we're at a place where it's head-to-head -head and there's still a chance to take him on. I think it's it, today felt to me about a fight for momentum. And, and I I think we have, do have to give DeSantis some credit. He had a very strong debate. I mean, just in the last couple of days, some of his people, after that uh, debate that he had with Gavin Newsom, they were really excited because he was sort of demonstrating a growth that they wanted to see from him. And I think it, it showed up tonight in a way that might help him. Um, it has helped Nikki Haley to be on this debate stage and perform aggressively. It'll be really important for DeSantis if he can take that momentum and push it forward, because this is the moment. There's no more time left before Iowa. Like, this is the moment that he has to show that there's going to be a surge going into Iowa. Otherwise, it's hard to see what the path is. It would have been good for that to happen for him tonight, and I, I, just, <laughs> I just don't think that it did. It's too little too late, I think. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing about it is, there's something about him that's just hard to like him. Like he he kind of he comes out there, he he lands all the points, he lands all the talking points, but there's he, his affect. And I'm just I hate to say it, this is kind of kind of petty and shallow, but his affect, he looks uncomfortable. He doesn't like anybody there. Doesn't like and and it makes it hard for people to connect. So I think that people are 
there's a reason that he's like a, 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 a bottle of soda is losing the fizz. And he did not put the fizz back in that soda tonight.